is indeed the very unrest I mentioned in Syria. It certainly threatened Assad, their key ally, and even if he survives, which is unclear, he clearly will do so in a weakened state and one in which he has much less legitimacy. It's quite interesting that Erdogan, the Prime Minister of Turkey, who's soon to be almost over with Saudi Arabia and the Gulf countries, as I mentioned, uh, our economic uh, and political levers with Egypt are quite considerable. With respect to Iraq, it is important, I hope, that we will keep a residual military presence there to keep Iran from gaining more influence. The satirists are pressuring Prime Minister Malaki to not extend in any way our presence, with some 47,000 troops still there, and I hope that the Prime Minister can be persuaded that it is important that the U.S. continue to maintain a military presence in Iraq as a way of reducing Iranian influence. With respect to Afghanistan, it is also important that we continue to maintain a strong military presence. The surge obviously has ups and downs, but it has weakened the Taliban, and a negotiated settlement will be a much better one from our perspective if we can continue to put pressure on the Taliban and their allies in every way. With respect to Iran, as everyone on this panel has been stating, it is important to strengthen the democratic opposition. It is Iran which is the terrorist state. That's where the terrorism emanates. And that's where the focus should be. The State Department is going through their process as the Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia required them to do. And I hope that as they do so, they will expedite their decision and that they will reflect on the fact that the UK and the EU, to which I was an ambassador, uh, have both uh, lifted their restrictions with respect to the MEK. But the State Department, I hope, will make their decision based on the merits and to do so quickly and promptly, again, recognizing the precedents that others have created. It is important that we strengthen democratic forces not only in Iran but throughout the region. This is a critical inflection point in the history of this region. And it is incredibly important that we put every resource, including the G20 pledge of $20 billion, into Egypt and Tunisia and to support the democratic forces there to make it clear that going in a more radical direction would be a subterfuge of the whole Arab Spring. What happens over the next six months will have meaning for decades to come, and we have to act with great alacrity. One last point. I've lived with sanctions uh, and helped craft them during the Clinton administration. I called myself the sanctions meister during that eight-year period. There is no question that the four rounds of UN sanctions together with the EU and U.S. unilateral sanctions focused specifically on the financial sector in Iran are having an effect. They're raising the cost of the nuclear program. That, together with cyber warfare, defections, and assassinations of key scientists have slowed but not stopped the program. 